I understand it was 39 degrees yesterday in Sintra, pretty hot, but, um, but Mario Draghi's playing it cool. When do you think we're going to see the first interest rate hike yeah. from the ECB? If I have to interpret what Mario Draghi said, it's probably not for a year. Uh, in a sense, he was very careful in putting a lot of contingency so that uh, he has a lot of uh, uh, wiggle room to do what the circumstances need. Uh, but he was pretty clear in saying that uh, he's going to be uh, patient, uh, persistent and prudent. Uh, I think that in both directions. So I don't expect uh, him to increase interest rates uh, anytime soon. Do you think that, where do you think the, inter where, how far do you think the ECB will get in raising rates before it has to start thinking about cutting? I, how, how much dry powder do you think the ECB will have going into the next downturn? Uh, I think it depends a lot on when the downturn will come. I think that uh, the, the most uh, serious issue is that we have seen some softening, and, and Mario Draghi spoke about this. We've seen some uh, softening that is a bit strange in this phase of the cycle. So there are some uh, contingency factors, and we hope these uh, mm -hmm. are temporary factors. I think that the big concern is uh, uh, what happens, of course, in the global situation, especially international trade. If this were to uh, deteriorate soon, I think this will put uh, uh, the ECB in a, in, a, in a bind, in a difficult situation. Dr. Zingales, we've got you for a good amount of time today in doing ECB here in central banks, and then we'll look to trade in our next section. But the fact is, they can be exogenous shocks. There, there seems to be an immense messaging of control by Chairman Powell, by Mr. Draghi, by Governor Carney. Message, message, we're in control, we know what we're doing. Do you buy it for a minute? Are these central bankers really in control right now? Uh, up to a point. I think they are in control of what they can control, which is monetary policy, with some limits uh, given by the zero lower bound. Of course, they cannot control trade, they cannot control uh, political issues, and those seem to be the big shock coming up. In a sense, uh, even uh, an oil price shock would probably be driven by political considerations. <clears throat> so we cannot expect them to control politics, and, uh, and I think they, they know that. What are you listening for in Sintra? The fact is it always makes news. It's one of the most interesting conferences of the year. When you got off the airplane, you got in your helicopter, you went to Sintra, what is the thing, Professor Zingales, you're listening for in Portugal? Sorry, sorry no helicopter, just a Uber. But uh, besides that, uh, I think that uh, I just listened to a paper by Stock and Watson about uh, the disappearing Philip curve. And I thought that was uh, quite interesting because uh, uh, they search hard to find a Philip curve. And surprise, surprise, they find it only in uh, house prices. So it seems that uh, house prices are very sens sensitive to the cycle and wages are not, uh, which raises a question of why wages are not. And it seems like uh, it's specific of uh, the market for wages and maybe uh, there is not enough uh, power on the side of labor to push up the uh, wages. 